Hello, and thank you for attending this public consultation for the West Montrose Covered Bridge Rehabilitation Project. We'd like to take the opportunity to acknowledge that this project exists within the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Neutral Peoples. We recognize our responsibility to serve as stewards to the land and honor the original caretakers that came before us. I'm Michelle Pinto, a project manager at the region of Waterloo. Today, we will update you on the rehabilitation alternatives for the West Montrose Cover Bridge project. I will briefly introduce the project and then turn it over to our consultant team who will share the update for today's conversation. After years of detailed structural monitoring and assessment, it has been determined that the West Montrose Bridge requires a structural rehabilitation to ensure safety and preservation of the bridge over the long term. The planning and design for this project is being directed by staff from the region of Waterloo and the Township of Woolwich, along with Township of Woolwich Mayor Sandy Shantz and Woolwich Councillors Larry Shantz and Murray Martin. The consulting engineering firm Doug Dixon and Associates has been retained by the region to provide preliminary and final design services for this project, as well as contract administration and inspection services through the construction phase. Joining me today from our consulting team is Doug Dixon and Kevin Lee. This study follows the municipal class environmental assessment process for Schedule A plus projects. As part of this study, the project team is conducting a natural environment review, an archaeological investigation, and a, health, a cultural heritage review. In 2014, the region completed a preservation plan for the West Montrose Covered Bridge. In the preservation plan, recommendations were made regarding the long-term upkeep of the bridge. These recommendations included the general strengthening of the bridge, roof and cladding repairs, and other bridge improvements to mitigate risks due to oversized vehicles, fire, flooding, ice, and snow. To implement these recommendations, the region has retained Doug Dixon and Associates to develop a design that will rehabilitate the West Montrose Covered Bridge, as well as minimize future maintenance requirements while at the same time preserving the heritage of the bridge. There are several challenges that need to be overcome during the rehabilitation design of the West Montrose Covered Bridge. These are natural, there are natural forces that need to be addressed, such as wind, flooding, snow, and ice. With ongoing climate change, experts in the field foresee increasing wind speed, higher amounts of precipitation, and increasing frequency of, and severity of flooding. There are, these all represent additional loads on the bridge that were not anticipated by the original bridge designer. The bridge is also subject to he heavy vehicles from time to time. Broken floor beams due to overloads on the bridge have been an issue in recent years. The rehabilitation design will need to provide the bridge with sufficient strength to withstand these and other forces. There is also the risk of vandalism. This may include graffiti and fire. The region will continue to investigate options for the installation of a fire suppression system. Since local water supply does not have sufficient pressure and or capacity to drive a sprinkler system, a more in-depth view, review of alternative water sources and potential budget requirements will be completed as a separate undertaking. The preferred alternative rehabilitation method will not preclude the installation of a sprinkler system at a future date. The existing roof and cladding of the bridge are deteriorating and are allowing water to leak into the bridge. This accelerates the deterioration of the timber trusses. Protection of the structural members from rain and snow is the primary method of ensuring the longevity of the bridge. The proposed rehabilitation will therefore need to ensure the structural members are well protected from the environment. In October 2021, the region hosted a virtual public consultation center number one on the Engage Waterloo website. At the time, the region and DDA presented a rehabilitation design 
which would use steel girders to reinforce the existing timber trusses. The existing steel bailey truss would be removed. The Engage Waterloo website received 255 visitors with over 36 visitors providing feedback. The survey respondents mostly live near the bridge and frequently visit the bridge or use it to cross the Grand River. Based on the feedback, most respondents were in favor of rehabilitating the bridge by replacing the Bailey trusses with new steel girders. Along with the steel girders, the majority preferred maintaining a timber deck. Most respondents who provided feedback had no issues with removing the Bailey trusses, but would like to see some sections of the Bailey trusses preserved for display purposes. The respondents were also in favor of roadside features to restrict oversized vehicles from entering the bridge. They were also in favor of removing the visible sag in the roof line and deck of the existing bridge. In addition to responding to multiple choice survey questions, many visitors to the Engage Waterloo website provided written responses. Many participants asked for the installation of a fire suppression system, security cameras, and fiber optic ducts in the bridge as part of the rehabilitation. There were requests for, the protect, for protection on line 86 to allow safe passage for horses and buggies during construction and to limit the impact of construction on Letson Park and surrounding areas. Furthermore, many participants made comments regarding a possible increase in the load limit on the bridge, as well as the type of bridge deck surface. The region also received letters and correspondence from local and international interest groups. There were requests from interest groups and respondents to reevaluate the bridge rehabilitation strategy presented in PCC number one. As a result of that request, the region included an alternative for the removal of the Bailey trusses and the reinforcement of the wood trusses to carry all imposed loads. This resulted in five alternatives being considered. The region again reviewed the original four alternatives as well as the new timber truss reinforcement alternative. The project team first considered the do nothing option, as well as restricting the bridge to pedestrians and cyclists only. Neither of these alternatives address the recommendations made in the 2014 preservation plan and were therefore not considered further. A common solution to strengthening timber bridges is, to ins is the installation of a high strength tensioning rod. This would be similar to the existing longitudinal tensioning rods on the bottom of the bottom cord. However, the effectiveness of this type of reinforcing is sensitive to temperature and moisture fluctuations in the timber and becomes ineffective of, over time. Therefore, this alternative was not further considered. Two alternatives which meet the project goals are the steel girder reinforcement alternative, which was presented in PCC number one, and the timber truss reinforcement alternative. The steel girder reinforcement alternative or alternative one involves the replacement of the existing bailey trusses with two steel girders. Steel floor beams would be installed between the steel girders to isolate vehicles and vehicle and pedestrian loads from the existing timber trusses. This is for the most part, the same approach as has been in place with the Bailey trusses since 1965. The timber truss reinforcement alternative or alternative B is the removal of the existing Bailey trusses and the reinforcement of the existing timber trusses with fiber reinforced polymers. Other work on the bridge common to both alternatives would include replacement of the existing deck, roof shingles and exterior cladding and repairs to the abutments and piers, removal and longitudinal of 
removal of the longitudinal tensioning rods, which were installed in 1959 by the Ministry of Transportation, installation of height restriction devices to prevent large vehicles from crossing the bridge, and the installation of a utility duct for future fiber optic cables. DDA has prepared renderings for each of these alternatives. These renderings approximately show what the alternatives would look like following rehabilitation. The first rendering of the exterior elevation view of alter uh, is the exterior elevation view of the alternative A. The most obvious change from the existing bridge is the new roof and cladding. More vibrant colors will be visible on the bridge initially following construction. The seg of the bridge will also be removed. Removing a section of the exterior cladding, the steel girder and the timber truss can be seen on the interior of the bridge. From the entrance of the bridge, there are no major changes to the interior of the bridge from the existing. There will be new cladding, splash panel, curb, and, and the new tar and chip asphalt wearing surface. Similarly, from the bridge interior, alternative A will generally look the same as how the bridge currently looks. The underside of the bridge is where the modifications can be seen. The first thing to know is the removal of the longitudinal tension rod installed by the Ministry of Transportation in 1959. The second thing to know is the underside of the proposed steel girder. Uh, they are now visible from below. The girders are located just above the timber floor beams and will be exposed on the underside of the bridge. Hidden above each timber floor beam is, uh, is a steel floor beam connecting the two steel girders together. The steel floor beams in conjunction with the steel girders will fully support the deck and carry all imposed loads. To minimize future maintenance work on the deck, the existing deck will be replaced with a glue laminated timber deck as part of the proposed rehab rehabilitation. The existing timber needle beam will also be strengthened to allow the structure to resist higher wind loads. Moving on to alternative B, this alternative will also include the replacement of the roof and cladding. However, the bridge height will need to be increased by around 300 millimeter or one foot to accommodate the, to accommodate the installation of timber reinforcement while maintaining the existing elevation of the lowest point on the bridge. The increase in bridge height is due to the need to add fiber reinforced polymer reinforcement between the floor beams and the timber truss. On the top left of Top left of the slide is an example of the timber reinforcement and its relative, relative size compared to the uh, truss bottom, bottom cord. With the removal of the Bailey truss, it is now possible to expose the bottom half of the timber truss. To protect the timber truss from vehicle impact, timber traffic railings and curbs will be installed. It should be noted that the timber guy rails deviates from the original bridge as seen in the 1954 photo, the white splash, splash panels were in place even before the installation of the steel baby truss in 1965. To increase the low carrying capacity of the timber truss members, timber reinforcement will need to be bolted onto the timber truss. In this rendering, the lighter colored truss reinforcement can be seen. The example photograph shows an actual installation of such reinforcement on a re recently rehabilitated timber covered bridge. On the underside, the reinforcements on the truss bottom cord and the floor and needle beams are visible. An example of a truss bottom cord reinforcement is shown on the lower right corner. On the West Monroe's covered bridge, the floor and needle beams are the critical members. These are the first members to fail under overloading. In the past, there has been a number of broken floor beams. And to minimize the need for the region to close the bridge and replace the broken floor and needle beams, these beams will be reinforced to ensure they have sufficient capacity to withstand the posted loads. Similar to alternative A, the existing deck will be replaced with a glue laminated timber deck and the longitudinal tension rods will also be removed. To identify the best alternative, 
for the West Mount Rose Cover Bridge. The two alternatives were, re re were evaluated against the following criteria and constraints. These include the structural performance, constructability, cultural heritage, aesthetics, sustainability, and the life cycle cost. Alternative A was identified to be the better in terms of structural performance after considering several factors. One such factor for this conclusion is that the steel reinforcement provides a ductile response to overloading rather than a sudden brittle failure with the timber truss and FRP reinforcement. In terms of constructability, both alternatives will likely have a similar restriction and complexity during construction. Therefore, both alternatives are ranked equally for constructability. In terms of aesthetics, Alternative B has been rated higher with the exposed wooden truss. Based on a heritage assessment, both alternatives make changes to the bridge and have similar heritage impact. The bridge has been modified at many stages of its life. The installation of the splash panels and the installation of the Bailey trusses are but two of many changes since construction. Both alternatives continue such modification and have been rated equally under this criterion. In terms of sustainability, the use of timber reinforcement instead of steel is generally accepted as being more sustainable. DDA completed a life cycle cost analysis of both alternatives by considering the bridge capital construction costs and maintenance costs over the life of the bridge. While alternative A had a slightly higher capital construction cost, this extra cost is offset by a higher maintenance cost of alternative B. At the current level of estimating, both alternatives had similar life cycle costs over a 75 year design life and are therefore ranked equally. After considering the six criteria, alternative B was found to be the higher ranked alternative Therefore, alternative B is recommended to be carried forward as the preferred rehabilitation method. To summarize, the preferred alternative would involve the removal of the steel baby trusses from the bridge and the strengthening of the existing timber truss members with high strength fiber reinforced polymer reinforcements. The height of the bridge will be increased to accommodate the truss reinforcement Timber guy rails and curbs will be installed on the interior of the bridge to protect the truss from vehicle impacts. The existing deck, roof, and exterior cladding will all be replaced to ensure the repaired truss are well protected from the environment. Finally, a high restriction bar will be installed at the entrance of, entrances of the bridge to mitigate the potential for over, overweight vehicles from entering the bridge. A rendering of what the height restriction bar may look like is shown in this slide. As seen in the example photos, height restriction bars are very common for timber cover bridges and serve as a vital component to protect the bridge. The public has expressed support for the installation of a height restriction bar during the last public consultation. We are seeking input on the two options presented. The goal is to design something that is architecturally and aesthetically consistent with the West Monroe's covered bridge. I will now hand this presentation back to Michelle to wrap up. Thanks, Kevin. So today we are asking you for comments as part of the public consultation meeting. After we collect comments, we will finalize the preferred alternative for recommendation to regional council in the fall of this year. Following council approval of the preferred rehabilitation concept, detailed design will proceed and construction is planned to begin in 2023 and wrap up in 2024. The information you are hearing about today is available on our engagewr.ca website. Please subscribe to this page for future project updates. Your comments are encouraged and welcome, and we will be collecting all of them for the project team to review and answer. Please fill out the survey by July 4th. Thank you for your time listening to today's presentation. If you have a question at any time throughout this project, please send me an email at the contact information noted on the screen. Thank you.